G'day everyone. This is a quick video about my Maker Faire project for 2014. I know it's been a while. Um, can't promise I'll be making videos more regularly than I have been, but you know, I like to make a video every now and then. Anyway, I call it uh, I call it the Tapestry Electroscope, but basically it's an array of electroscopes that detect electric field around the human body or any kind of movement. As you can see I've got a number of different modules. They're all hung on these linear array basically of um, eight per chain and inside each unit is a differential electroscope that will basically light up an LED based on the electric field around the antennas. I'll take you over there in a minute you can have a close look at one of the modules but unfortunately I placed it here in the, uh, the hallway here in Valve and it's kind of hard to demonstrate it because I can't get it all on the camera at once but uh, what I can do is I can walk over to it and my, the electric field around my body is I scrub my feet on the ground and if I'm carrying a piece of PVC pipe here that I can charge up by rubbing it we'll uh, make it change colour. Let's go do that. It's actually quite sensitive. It was intended to be an interactive art piece so that uh, people could come up to it and see the electric field around their body. It responds more to change rather than static DC electric fields, which uh, means it doesn't have any memory or, or any kind of way of showing, say, the silhouette around someone's body. But a lot of people really enjoy jumping up and down in front of it, scrubbing their feet on a piece of carpet that I had there. Um, and in general, you know, playing with it, waving the wand around, etc. It's, uh, it's super simple. I'll show you one of the modules. As we can see here each one has two antennas. The uh, power supply is just common for all of them. They're all in, uh, in parallel. Power is, uh, is fed from a, a little brick up there on the roof. There's a power switch. Some of the modules got a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit beaten up down at Maker Faire. It was actually quite impressive that I managed to get the entire thing uh, through the airport security etc without getting it completely destroyed. But I guess it'll, uh, it'll just live here and, until I move it because it's uh, kind of a pain to roll up and move. Some of the modules are a little bit more broken than others. I think one or two of them the blue channel might be damaged on, but yeah. It was a huge amount of work to build this thing. Alrighty, so inside, take one of these guys apart. See inside there's a little surface mount board. It's picking up my uh, motion of my body in the electric field from the camera quite strongly. There's uh, three transistors per side. Uh, there's a, an array basically like a Darlington array of three transistors for the PMP and three transistors for MPN. One picks up, you know, charge being pushed into the base of one transistor or pulled out of the other one. I'll show you the circuit diagram in a minute and there's some resistors and uh, that's really all there is to it. In hindsight I probably should have built it uh, through hole. These were, all these boards were made on the LPKF mill that we have here and then pasted and, uh, and hand hot aired. It was an enormous amount of work to manufacture all of the, uh, the units. But, there we go. Now it just, uh, I guess it acts as an interactive art exhibit here. I put it near the bathroom, so on this floor, whenever someone walks past, it'll, uh, it'll light up, and uh, I should probably write up something here and put it on the wall talking about what it actually is and how it works. And here's the circuit diagram. Super simple. Um, I think I've spoken about this circuit, at least a unipolar version of it, um, before. The antennas are just capacitive plates essentially. As you approach them with a charged object or withdraw with a charge from with a charged object, you induce some current to be pulled in or out of the, the metal um, because of the electric field, and it's just a chain of 
you know, BJTs that amplify that that up to a current that can light up an LED. There's a limiting resistor, and um, the PMP version works exactly the same, but obviously responds to charge in the opposite direction. The leakages of the the circuit and the the base current eventually discharges any induced charge that you put on the um, the metal objects, even if you charge it by induction or touch it or you know discharge into it. Um, it will it will recover eventually, actually fairly quickly. The uh, the good thing about using BJTs is it's actually quite robust. I mean, naturally a FET would be a another way to do it, but um, BJTs because they're a junction device, they don't have any you know dielectrics to blow up. You can still blow them up by uh, zapping them really hard, but it so far hasn't been a problem. Some of the early prototypes had a resistor in the base, uh, which just to protect them from you know, normal human body model style discharge into the into the um, the base of the transistor. But it proved to not be necessary, except in a couple of cases if you short here and here, and the power supply you know is is obviously going to go right through all the transistors and Several of the modules caught on fire in a pretty spectacular way when I did that accidentally um, once I moved to the real power supply that didn't have a whole bunch of current limiting. It, uh, again, one of those things when you manufacture something at a scale is completely different than when you do it just uh, as a quick hack in the lab or on the bench or whatever. So, in this particular case, it was, it's okay, but it's not quite as robust as I would, uh, as I would like. And if I ever built it again, or, or built it, um, you know, commercially as, a, as an installation or something, or as a kit, I'd uh, definitely add a little bit more protection to the circuit. Alrighty, um, yep, this is a quick one. Super simple. Uh, it was a lot of fun. This year I didn't have a lot of time. I was hoping to do, um, uh, well, something completely different that was far more ambitious for Maker Fair, but unfortunately I did not make it in time, so I had this as kind of my backup project and did that instead. I was going to go to the uh, the Maker Faire here in Seattle but uh, unfortunately for some reason the Maker Faire organizers in Seattle decided to charge everyone $250 for uh, entry just as a as a maker like not as a commercial maker or anything like that and I didn't think that that was particularly ethical for people that are just uh, giving their time and and showing you know their project they're not making any money out of it they're only adding to the event which people are paying tickets for I, I thought that was a, a bit of a raw deal so unfortunately I withdrew my participation and didn't go to Maker Faire Seattle this year however I did go to the big Maker Faire if I saw you there g'day um, was was a great time as uh, as it always is and uh, I'll be there again next year maybe with the project that I intended to bring or maybe with something completely different I don't know alrighty till next time bye